Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, December 12th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. Rob today wrote about sitemap.xml, a file that he found pretty useful for penetration testers. Sitemap.xml can probably pretty well be described as the opposite of robots.txt. It's a standard formatted file that you often leave on a web server in order to give search engines hints as to what files to prioritize when there is spidering. And then they're often also used, for example, when you see the results being displayed on a search engine, you may see a couple pages being highlighted. Now, these files are often auto-generated by little scripts. And the one thing that Rob finds is that, well, they're often somewhat out of date. So sometimes they may lead to pages that are no longer really in use. And that, of course, sometimes can lead to vulnerabilities. The other issue where a sitemap.xml comes in handy that it also sometimes lists pages that aren't linked from other pages within the site like let's say pages that are created for specific uh, advertisement campaigns and such so that way if you just would spider the site using traditional tools well uh, you would have missed uh, those specific pages Rob, as usual, offers a couple PowerShell scripts and such to deal with parsing the output of sitemap.xml and also simplifying the results and converting the results into more standard formats. And Apple today released updates for iOS, iPadOS, macOS, and tvOS, as well as watchOS, so pretty much everything that Apple releases. These updates fix 42 different vulnerabilities. For the older versions of uh, iOS and macOS, this update includes uh, the fixes for the zero days uh, that were patched in current versions of iOS and macOS about a week ago. There's also an update for macOS that patches the Bluetooth vulnerability. I think I mentioned that one in yesterday's podcast that allows the injection of keystrokes. These are also feature updates, so it's not just a bug fix and security release. And at Black Hat Europe, uh, researchers from the International Institute of Information Technology in Hyderabad in India did uh, present some interesting work how password managers can be tricked into spilling passwords into the wrong app. This particular technique being introduced here takes advantage of a web view, which does allow apps to display web pages as part of the app. It's essentially sort of a stripped down browser and the web content is just being displayed as part of the app window. Now, where the trick then comes in is that basically the app is able to load any web page in itself. As far as the password manager is concerned, this is the actual web page for which you may have a password saved, but the the app actually does have access to the content of the web page because there isn't really sort of the separation that we usually have sort of with different origins because this is part of the actual app. The end effect is that when the user opens the malicious app, the app will load the login form from the victim's web page. The password manager will automatically fill in the username and password, and then the malicious app is able to read those credentials. Now, they tested a number of different password managers on Android to figure out how vulnerable they are. Without use of JavaScript, only Google Smart Lock and Dashlane were not vulnerable because they use a different autofill approach known as Open YOLO. The remainder of the password managers, like 1Password, LastPass, and the keeper and a couple others, they use the standard autofill framework, which is vulnerable. In one case, one password, they just don't support, in some cases, the pre-filling of usernames and passwords. With JavaScript, 
pretty much all of them are vulnerable regardless of the framework being used here. Just one password is a little bit exception here. They weren't able to get both username and password or only the username just because that's not supported in one password, but they were actually able to get the password by itself. For more details, I linked to the presentation slides in the show notes. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. And remember, always like if you subscribe and leave good reviews in your favorite podcast app. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.